Friday of the fourth week of Easter reflection. The Lord is saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. And all the other religious leaders showed the way, Jesus became the way. And others explained the truth, Jesus is the truth. And others show how to get the life, and Jesus became the life. My dear friends, so in this beautiful journey, in the first reading we find how the same when Paul came to Antioch of Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, the same sermon is being continued. Brothers and sons of family of Abraham and those among you who fear God to us has been sent the message of this salvation for those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers because they did not recognize him nor understand the utterance of the prophets which are read every Sabbath fulfilled them by condemning him. Now see the blessing in these guys our beauty of our God becomes the way truth and life the very act of darkness he has turned into light. So what has happened in the hands of devil is the way how he executed how he fulfilled the purpose of God. Of course St. Paul is saying that for those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him, nor understand the utterance of prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfill them by condemning him. The very act of condemn has become a blessing. You can never justify sin. But then the moment you surrender your life, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, those who love God and those who are called by him, he will turn everything into good. So that's exactly the beauty when he comes and he says that I am the way, truth and life. And see, and through they found, though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. Now, humanly speaking, this is the extreme they can do. Extreme negative end that where they can go. Kill him and lay him in a tomb. But then, in our zero, in the level we are done, God can start it all over again. That's exactly what happened. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days, he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us they are children by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. My dear friends, so the, this is the good news. Killing their guilt, I mean, giving them hope in that synagogue. People always preaching, connecting the Old Testament and New Testament. And beautifully, Finding the how found the finding their lives in the salvation history, explaining how but how people mess up in their life, God can make it to a make it make all what has what has broken by men. God can make it make it make it a blessing. So that's exactly why the Lord is saying, "Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God." Believe also in me. Now, see the negativity in humankind, in the world, what has happened to him, what people have done to his life. Betrayed. I mean, creator has killed by creation. 
That is the extreme end that you can think of. But the Lord is saying, do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. Because as long as you surrender your life to me, it's going to be different. So all this, all what happened in this world, it's not perpetual. It will change. We have a permanent place away from this world. The world Lord is saying, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So you believe the word. So all what, the, even the sins that had happened has filled, in a way, ironically, has helped to fulfill the word of God. So you don't have to worry. If you trust the Lord, even Judah, Judas would have trusted him. That is, his love is more than what he, what he has done. So don't be troubled, disheartened. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it is were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. So absence of God, absence of Jesus in their life is a must. The Lord is saying, I have to go for, uh, for, I, have to, for I have to send the Holy Spirit to your lives. So that absence, you have to be careful. In that absence, you have to believe. Believe the Lord strongly that he would, he's going to do something. So he's, he has gone, he has gone to prepare a place for you. So there is enough room in the Father's house, in that mansion. If it, is, were, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? <coughs> so it's beautiful. So that separation is for your, is for your well-being. That separation is for you to have a permanent place there. For that, you have to go through that emptiness. Don't go, to that, go through that zero. Brokenness, pain, agony. There's no other way. But that trust, faith, will help you to hold on. Wait upon him until the moment of fulfilling the promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. So, so glory is waiting. You have to wait for the glory. Pain and glory. Death, pain, suffering, death and resurrection. So this is, this is the way. My dear friends, so that will lead you to a perpetual, everlasting happiness. Thomas said to him, you know where I am going. The Lord is saying that I am, that where I am, I, you, I may, I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That's the very reason Jesus came to the world, to be the bridge to the bosom of the Father. So Adam and Eve lost their presence. Now Jesus has come to bridge that gap so that you will be able to experience the bosom of the Father. So for that you have to wait. Uh, a passage of absence, passage of desert, wilderness should be there before the promised land. So he will come back. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. He will definitely come back. So as Paul and, and Paul was explaining in that synagogue, all what has happened, all the sins that you have committed, is nothing compared to the love of Jesus. The moment you surrender, give your life, give yourself, he can turn that water into wine. Because he turned that wine into blood as a ransom. Amen. May God bless you.